Ooh. Excellent. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. John's for our Holy Communion service. Lovely to see you all here in the church. And also, I can't see you, but I know you're there, those who are watching and participating online, uh, on Facebook or Zoom or through the telephone line. So everyone is extremely welcome, and it's lovely to be uh, connected together in our worship of God this morning. I have a few notices and then some bands of marriage to publish also uh, before the service begins. Uh, first of all, our... All right, okay. <laughs> Just let that one go by before I continue. So the family fun day uh, sadly had to be postponed. It would have been today, but it's going to be on Sunday the 1st of August between three and five o'clock. Uh, there, there are going to be some refreshments, and so uh, we need to sign up if we're intending to come so that Ian has an idea of how many will be coming for refreshments and what people would like to eat. It's all on a form, which there's one on the notice board. Ian's got one and I've got one, so catch one of us or fill it in on the notice board afterwards, please. That's going to be a, a splendid event at which we will, um, you know, reach out to the community and have some fun together too. Um, a reminder that we are still collecting uh, toothbrushes, used toothbrushes, toothpaste tubes, cartons and so on for recycling. I've got a poster about it here. There's something on the church website uh, or Billy knows about it too. Um, now I'm reliably informed that it is the, today is the 40th wedding anniversary of Karen and Alistair, which I think deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Congratulations to you both. <laughs> stop digging, stop digging, Alistair. All right. Does anyone have any other notices or news items that I've uh, missed? Anything anyone would like to say before we begin? Okay. Right. Well, uh, I will publish the bands of marriage. This is exciting. This is the first time I've published these ones. So uh, these are the bands of marriage between Mark James Threlfall and Lucy Charlotte Endicott, both of this parish. And they're going to be married at St. Michael's Church, Great Tew. Uh, where they've been attending as regular worshippers. Uh, they live in this parish. Now, if anyone knows any reason why Mark and Lucy may not lawfully be married, you are to declare it now. No, excellent. That's good news for them. So that's done. So without further ado, we're going to begin our service. Everything you need to follow should appear up on the screen here at the appropriate time. Uh, we're still not allowed to sing in church. Uh, this is being um, campaigned about uh, nationally, so hopefully we're going to see some change on that rule soon. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And news and notices. Praise is rising. Right, I'm moving over to my guitar. This is a guitar that was my 60th birthday present. I'm just getting used to playing it, so do bear with me if, uh, if it's not quite all that it should be, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Looks the part, doesn't it? God, look at that. Praise is rising. I hope if I have the right song here.
Jesus, when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. continue with our prayer of preparation which we're going to say together almighty god to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your holy spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through christ our lord amen our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we're going to say together the collect, the set prayer for this, the fifth Sunday of Trin after Trinity. We say together, Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, we're now going to hear our first Bible reading, and Billy's going to read to us. Our Bible reading is taken from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 5 and 9 to 10. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, we are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their mighty campaigns. And the Lord said to you, you will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in, and in Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah, 33 years. Verses 9 to 10. David then took up residence in the fortress and called it the city of David. He built up the area around it from the terraces inward, and he became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. This is the word of the Lord. And we've got another song for you now. This is God's Spirit is in my heart. I'll catch up.
Gospel reading is now going to be read for us by Paddy. Today's Gospel reading is taken from uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to uh, 13. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? Where is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? It is, it is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and, with their, and among their own kin and in their house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money on their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out, proclaimed all that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed oil, anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the word of the Lord. 
to deliver the sermon. Lord, I pray that the words that I speak and the ears that hear those words will be directed by your Holy Spirit and that your message may come through. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to ask a couple of questions first. And I want you to raise your hand if the answer is yes. And if you're watching online, just wave at the camera. Uh, I want to know, can you put your hand up if you trust politicians? <laughs> no, not one hand. Okay. Um, can you put your hand up if you believe advertisements? Nobody trusts advertisements either. Okay. Um, I did a little bit of research, and I'll come back to the idea about trust, but the most trusted uh, professions are doctors, nurses, engineers, and teachers. Uh, and then the list goes on. I'm thinking about Mark's gospel, about the reading that Paddy uh, gave us this morning. The identity of Jesus is a consistent issue in Mark's gospel. We hear the opinion of rulers, the religious authorities, the crowds, the disciples, and family members. But the question keeps coming back to who do you, the reader, say that Jesus is? And if you do honour Jesus as a prophet, or maybe more than a prophet, what does that mean to you? For the first time in Mark's story, Jesus enters his hometown synagogue. He's been successful in nearby places like Capernaum. So you'd expect that it would go well, but no, it all gets really negative and the crowd questions Jesus' own origins. Now, if anyone's got the right to question them, it should be the people that know him best, yeah? But note their description of him. He's the carpenter. He's Mary's son. There's no mention of Joseph, a father figure. In first century culture, that is a direct insult. It's impugning his honour. It's scandalous. So when he comes back to Nazareth, Jesus faces questions of trust. He goes home, goes to what must have been his family and childhood synagogue, and he starts to teach the people. But the problem is everyone knows him and they know his family. Who does he think he is? They don't trust him. They don't trust that he speaks for God and can do the things he says he can. And as a result, he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few people and heal them. Well, Really, I'm not sure that I blame the crowd for questioning him. I'm not sure I would believe him either if I'd seen him grow up like any other kid. So what does Jesus have to do? He has to earn their trust. He just can't get it right there and then. He has to keep going. He has to keep teaching. He has to keep changing people's lives. He has to die on the cross. He has to rise again. Christianity in the West is in deep trouble. 
So many adults have left the religion of their youth, most for no religion at all. People are leaving the faith. We are living in a Nazareth world, a culture that is at best disinterested in Jesus. So can we change anything by preaching about Christ? Maybe, maybe not. I think the root problem is trust, lack of it. People just don't trust the church anymore. And really, why should they? Pedophiles, prejudice, hypocrisy. And with all that, which is really just the root, uh, sorry, the tip of the iceberg, who in their right mind would trust us with their spiritual health, much less the spiritual health of their children? You know that list of people we trust that I mentioned? Well, priests and vicars don't even make the top ten, I'm afraid. To earn that trust, we have to acknowledge that we have made some horrific mistakes in the distant and not-so-distant past. We might have our focus on God, but we're human and we make mistakes, and we will no doubt make more mistakes in the future. Most importantly, we need to win back people's trust by remembering who we say we are, Christians representing Christ. I'll say that again, by remembering who we say we are, Christians representing Christ. That means living according to his teaching. Our reading today has Jesus sending out his disciples and the Great Commission, as it's known, is go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That's from Matthew chapter 28. And in Matthew chapter 22, we have the great commandment, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. That is the only way people will trust us. And until they trust us, they won't listen to what we say. And even then, we need to remember that not everyone is going to be able to trust us or God. Some people will, as we heard in our gospel reading, but some won't. Jesus knew that. He told his disciples as much. But being rejected in his hometown synagogue didn't stop Jesus' mission for long. Perhaps it was the impetus he needed for sending out the twelve on their first assignment. He'd chosen the twelve earlier in Mark's account. And since that point, they were preparing for their own mission as Jesus taught about the nature of God's reign, providing private instruction for them. Later, they witnessed Jesus casting out demons, raising Jairus' daughter from the dead, and healing a woman who'd been bleeding for 12 years, not to mention calming the storm when they were out in a boat and afraid for their lives. Finally, just before he sent them out, he himself experienced rejection, preparing his disciples for potential setbacks. 
Mind you, sending out the 12 doesn't actually look like a great idea when you read Mark's Gospel. We've only seen the disciples a few times in the previous chapters, and they haven't exactly distinguished themselves. In chapter 4, they don't understand Jesus' parables, and they need explanations. Later, in the same chapter, when they're in the boat, Jesus accuses them of being fearful and lacking faith when he calms the storm. And he says, sorry, they say, who then is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? And then they have a little cameo role in chapter 5 where they question Jesus for saying, who touched me when the woman who'd been bleeding touched his cloak? But nevertheless, Jesus sends them out on this mission to preach repentance, to heal the sick, and to cast out demons. And according to Mark's Gospel, their mission was successful. The disciples, clueless in several earlier stories, apparently understood enough to be effective carrying out their mission. So how is that relevant for us today? Well, we know God doesn't necessarily choose the qualified, but he qualifies the chosen. I like that. He doesn't necessarily choose the qualified, but he qualifies the chosen. Maybe we all need to hear that kind of encouragement sometimes. We do have one thing the disciples didn't, and it makes all the difference. We have experienced the faithfulness of God in Jesus crucified and risen. So while we may be saddened at the unbelief around us, we can still go out practicing and proclaiming our faith in Christ. In God we trust. Amen. Thanks, Billy. We come to our creed now, and everything you need to say appears on the screen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we normally have the prayers before we sing, don't we? Yes, can we go to uh, the prayers, please? Ray's going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we are gathered here in this church and wider by our technology in love and fellowship. Hear us now as we bring before you our cares and our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world, for Christians everywhere meeting in small house groups, in rural and town churches, and in great city cathedrals. 
grant that we and all your people may be built up in our faith and show in our lives the love we see in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for our churches of St. John and St. Britius, for Drew, our rector, and the supporting ministry team. We pray for all who minister, preach, and enlarge and enrich our understanding of God and help us to respond to his love. May they never find themselves rejected out of hand as our Saviour Jesus Christ was in his hometown synagogue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for those Christians working in places of power and influence who make decisions which affect the lives of so many people. Many people live in parts of the world where poverty and corruption are preventing access to vaccines. We ask for your help and guidance to world leaders so that vaccines and medical help reach everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give us light to see the gifts of God in all around us. We pray for those whom we love, family and friends who are the special people in our lives, wherever they may be. We pray for their hopes, their fears, their problems and their needs. But most of all, we thank you for each one of them and for what they give and mean to us. Many of our community are busily rebuilding working lives or venturing out socially again. We ask for your help, Lord, to keep us, our families, friends and associates safe as we try to return to a new normal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring Lord, we pray for the sick, for those in our church community who are finding their life painful, lonely, or uncertain, especially those who are ill or vulnerable. We ask your help for those on our parish prayer list. And in a moment of silence, we pray for anyone in need, known personally to us. Help them, Lord to sense your comfort in times of need and bless their families and carers. Bring them hope of an end to their sufferings and a resolution of their difficulties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today is the nation's first ever national thank you day. And we want to say thank you, Lord, to all those in our communities who help their fellow citizens through the crisis caused by the COVID pandemic. And with the anniversary of its formation taking place tomorrow, the 5th of July, we thank you, God of healing and compassion, for the establishment of the National Health Service and for the dedication of all who work in it. Give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who care for the sick and your wisdom to those engaged in medical research. Strengthen all in their vocation through your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have walked in the way of the Lord through this world and have come to their journey's end. May they be at peace in the great family of the faithful departed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for ourselves. As we go from our worship today to start the week ahead, we ask that in all we do, we may walk more closely with you at our side, safe in the knowledge that your fatherly love and care knows no bounds. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Ray, for leading us. We're going to share the peace now, um, without moving from our seats, of course, but we'll share the peace with those around us and with those who are with us online. So blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, and we share his peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord always be with you. So for one of those, uh, those around us, a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. I see. And we're going to have a song again, and this one is Open the Eyes of My Heart.
We don't take a collection in our services at the moment, but uh, so many people are continuing faithful giving, which supports the life and work and mission of the church, uh, financially and in practical uh, and other supporting roles. So we give thanks for all of that giving as we say together the offering prayer. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. We say together, we do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed 
through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Please remain seated as I distribute communion wafers to you. anyone? No. Good. The body and the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Post-communion song is Here is Love Fast as the Ocean. Oh, 
Grant, O Lord, we beseech you, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup give life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final song is Cornerstone.
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Um, amen. Oh, I've missed the blessing out. I do apologize. <sighs> May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.